black woman holds the story of our pain, of our generational pain, of our present life pain that has not been dealt with. It has physiological consequences. You come in and your blood pressure is higher. You come in and your blood glucose levels are higher. Those are natural bodily responses to stress. Every black woman, let it go so you can be free, so you can live again so you can have a peaceful life. Because I'm taking care of my mind, I'm taking care of my spirit, and the body will follow. When it comes to our physical healing, we need to be getting our mammograms. We need to be getting our colonoscopies, these preventive things, our uh, cervical exams, our pap smears. Dr. Carla Harwell has been serving the Fairfax community for over 25 years. I'm not just interested in your heart or just your lung or just your kidneys. I'm interested in you as a person, your whole person, your physical person, your spiritual person, your emotional person, because all of those things come into play. And so does the many roadblocks that black women face. But the funny thing about that to me is these obstacles and roadblocks always existed for black, for black women. Now it's a fancy term, you know, these social determinants of health. You know, your zip code determines how long you live. You know, your educational level determines how long you live. And Dr. Harwell says the process of healing also includes dealing with stressors. And it's not just in the home. It's at work as well. You know, you've got the systemic racism, the microaggressions that a lot of black women face in, in, in their work environment. So you're carrying that baggage. And especially as black women, we have to start thinking about ourselves, put ourselves first so that we can be able to take care of those others. It's a family affair. It's a family affair. When it comes to the black family, what goes on in this house stays in this house. And according to clinical counselor Marva Jones, keeping family secrets is normal. And sharing information about your family or sharing information about your trauma or talking about anxiety or depression, all of that was taboo. And with everything that black women are facing, even as the head of their households, the problem is, is that we consider so many things to be normal that we don't even take the time to check in, how am I feeling? The first part of the healing process is acknowledging that there is something in your past that you need to heal from, that you need to work through, or acknowledging that you have some depression that you can't shake on your own, that you need to talk about and it takes time, it takes effort, and sometimes it takes a lot of different emotions. But if you continue to do the work and you stay focused on what it is that you want to get past, you can get healed, but just don't quit. Inhale through the nose. Holistic psychotherapist Dr. Kelly Kirksey says there is healing in breathing, especially when stress, anxiety, and depression all constrict our ability to fully breathe and nourish ourselves. Then we're going to have inflammation in our body. The cortisol is going, going, going all over our system. The inflammatory response is the cause of so many illnesses. 
But after a trip to Africa and the door of no return, everything I began to look at from the lens of slavery and that trauma, I think about the trauma that my great grandmother, who had my grandfather, with one of the people that worked on the plantation or the sharecropping fields, he groomed her for rape. Too white to be raised with his black mother. So I see it, I see that, that chain and how each generation has experienced pain from that inception. And how it even manifested in her mother's illness. And that sadness and anger had crystallized in her body as this arthritis that was crippling her. It's often connected to unprocessed, unexpressed emotions. So we have to move it physically. We have to get it out. I beat the drum to release, to cry, to laugh, to celebrate. For many of us, the Black Church, our faith, the word, worship, and prayer got us through and over many hard trials, still believing in miracles and healing of our bodies and souls. Here at South Euclid United Church of Christ, we do something that most churches don't. We have on our staff a fully certified counselor and therapist, not just a Christian counselor. I don't think it's healthy to do the therapy piece without the spiritual piece, and I don't think it's healthy to do the spiritual piece without the therapy piece. They need to come hand in hand. After a very traumatic health issue, Pastor Jenkins was led to explore holistic practices as she navigated through her own personal healing process. I started to have significant excruciating pain in my hips, and the doctor did his MRI, took a look, and he said, ma'am, here's the challenge. It is evident that you are in excruciating pain, but there's also no evidence on the screen of why you're in this pain. He ended up giving me a cortisone shot too in my hips left and right. Through reading The Body Keeps the Score and having a holistic specialist, she found out that trauma is often stored in the hips. We have to explore the root of our trauma and dig around it in mind, in body, and in spirit. I am a black woman. And what advice does Pastor Jenkins have for other women? I can have hope and grief, and it's okay. I can know that I'm powerful and feel my weakness all in the same moment. When black women will lean into the complexity of how we feel, and courageously face it, we and our communities will be better. I shall not, I shall not be moved. I shall not, I shall not be moved. I shall not be moved. Just like a tree planted by the river, Mrs. Lee says she has never been moved from her faith and her upbringing in the church. Growing up in the church was my foundation. I never forgot what I was taught in the church. Her father was a pastor on 40th and Woodland, her mother a missionary. Together they raised her and her 11 siblings. And it was her faith that got her through some very difficult times. I put my children on their knees and we prayed, especially when things was going real bad, the violence and everything. So it came to a point where I knew that I had to do something because it was bothering me so much. I had nightmares. I had dreams of things you know, happening to me all over again. Like others in the series, rheumatoid arthritis also plagued Mrs. Lee, who was hospitalized when her children were very small. She says God healed her physically 
and eventually emotionally through forgiveness. I'm just going to have to forgive him. I'm just going to have to forgive him. And when I came to that point where I let, gave that over to the Lord and asked God to help me to forgive him, I tell you, he did. And it relieved me from the pain of going through that. And when I gave it to God, I had peace. Mrs. Lee was able to love again and marry David Lee, who vowed not only to love her, but her children as well. The Bible said he'll give you um, beauty for ashes. And I said, that was my time of beauty. Healing was a relief for Lee. She and her ex-husband are now friends who even attend the same church. And if you find love again, you'll be able to do it peacefully without having that yesterday keep coming back in your life, not holding on to the things of the past. Black Women, Our Hope, Health, and Healing is a production of Intentional Content, Inc. and part of connecting the dots between race and health. A project of IdeaStream Public Media funded by the Dr. Donald J. Goodman and Ruth Weber Goodman Philanthropic Funds of the Cleveland Foundation.